Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Dark Souls 3 SL1 New Game Plus 7 No Damage Run. This is going to be the Undead Settlement and the Rotted Cursed Greatwood, but before we do that I'm going to quickly trigger the bonfire that's waiting for us in this area and we're going to warp back to Vought. And I'm going to be skipping these enemies because uh, there's quite a lot of them and at this moment in time I didn't want to fight them, I just wanted to hit this. And there we go. And there's going to be a transition because of course I got killed. As is, as is life in the Souls game. But did you see my HP just then? That was an example of my uh, my modded life at this moment in time. Uh, if you didn't watch the introduction video, uh, I've used a script on the cheat engine which lowers my HP to put me constantly in uh, HP range of Red Tearstone Ring so I can squeeze a little bit of extra damage. And it doesn't make me invincible, it doesn't mean that I cannot die, I die just as easily as you would, it just means that I don't have to keep resetting my life with the, uh, the methods that you can use, the bloodlust, stabbing, poisoning, or using the symbol of avarice. But this bit looks so good on PC, guys, I was just aghast. Uh, how much I could see. The draw distance is fantastic, like, the draw distance on PlayStation 4 is a lot better, I think, than it is on Xbox One, but it's been such a long time since I've played on the PlayStation 4 version that I'd got used to crappy draw distance, and the draw distance on PC is the strongest by far. So it was just really, really nice to see these levels in such a fresh light. But here's me getting the first bonfire before I engage against the, the peasants in the Undead Settlement. Um, which I think we can safely agree are massively, massively influenced by Bloodborne. Like, they even have some of the same weapons. It's it's such a, an overt reference, isn't it? The pitchforks, the little harp hook thing they get. Like, there's, there's a lot of features here that are very reminiscent. As I swap my rings and uh, I take on these first few guys. I don't really like this area. And it's, it's for a few reasons. Like, why does that one dude clip into the floor at the very beginning? And, and can kind of attack you through walls and stuff. It seems like such a strange thing to put him there if he keeps going through the graphics so often. And of course, I don't have the cat ring at this point, I don't think, so I can't do any of the shortcuts I normally take, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's going to make me rethink the path that I take. As normally, I would go across the bridge, go past the flamberge thief, drop down and hit the bonfire, but uh, I didn't have the ring. And of course the reason I didn't have the ring is because this is actually a character that's on New Game 1. You know, I've just modded it so that he's in New Game Plus 7. And I could use the engine to give it me, but at this moment in time I, I just kind of wanted to get on with the game. And, and that's exactly what you're witnessing, so... We're going on a bit of a... of a detour of my normal path, and it's going to lead us to the first real boss of the game, which is that dude with the big saw. No lie, right? The guy with the fucking saw that I'm about to fight killed me more times than the dancer, Vought, and you, Dex Gundia. And you might be wondering, how the hell is that even possible, Chris? Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's because the timings were so different on PC compared to console. I used to have this guy's parry timings down, but for, for whatever reason, I could not do it. And he killed me so many times. It was kind of ridiculous. And it's one of those enemies that you can obviously skip and, and just completely avoid, but I wanted to kill him for the purposes of the run. You know, they've put these wonderful enemies here, I might as well have a crack at them. And I do think that the areas and the enemies at times can be more difficult than the bosses, just because you don't have the same amount of experience because you're so used to just skipping them. And that's not mentioning if you pull a couple of them at the same time and it gets all crazy like that, but there is a nice mercy killing of him, a nice revenge kill. He put me down so many times. I couldn't believe it. I, I, it just, I know I've not played this game in like eight months or something, but it, it shouldn't have been as hard as it was to kill him. And then this next sequence here, guys, I'm going to skip because the giant's not on my side. So I uh, don't really have time to dilly-dally. And I'm going to use the roll stun to get past the settlers and hopefully not get hit by the uh, the plow or the, uh, the pitchfork or whatever the hell that thing is. And now we get to take on one of my least favourite bosses in the game. So conceptually, I think the Rotted Cursed Greatwood, or is it the Cursed Rotted Greatwood? I don't know his name. I never fight this boss. This is a boss that uh, I just, on my last dozen runs, I've skipped because it's just kind of a gimmick fight. And it's a gimmick fight that's pretty simple for the most. But on New Game Plus 7, a little bit different. You know, this thing takes a pounding, an absolute beating. And that's not even mentioning the little dudes, so 
I had to figure out a way to get rid of these guys because they kept hitting me when I was trying to bust these balls. So I found out that if you throw knives at them and you bait them this way, it doesn't trigger the boss to turn around. And you can kill all of these little lackeys before the fight even starts, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Normally, I'd just run up to him, trigger the boss, and start hitting his balls, and they'd burst, and we'd fall down, and we'd be fine. But not on this uh, difficulty. This difficulty is a little bit... Uh, it takes a little bit more. The great factor about these enemies is you never have to respect them, because you can interrupt anything they do with a roll. And it really makes me wish that there were certain enemies in Bloodborne that had this feature. Because it, this is a feature that came from Bloodborne, I believe. It was the women on the, you know, the, the Hemwick women from Charnel Lane. They, they were the ones that first introduced us to this concept of making them flinch. Yet there are enemies in the Chalice Dungeons that I wish you could do that to, because it would be wonderful. Like, can you imagine if you could roll into the, the Black Widow woman who casts all those spiders, and you could interrupt her cast by rolling? That'd be beautiful. Or dashing, sorry, because, you know, if you're not, if you're locked on, you won't do that. But it's, it's such an interesting tool that could be fantastic. And it's a shame that there wasn't more to it. You know, some kind of statistic governing it. Or maybe a piece of equipment that could increase your ability to do it. Can you imagine a ring that allowed you to do that to enemies and bosses? But it had to be at a certain, like, stipulation. Maybe you had to wear certain amounts of armor or something specifically. It could have been a really interesting facet of the game. But it's just certain enemies you can interrupt for whatever reason. Uh, really, really interesting. It would have probably given a whole host of validity to the uh, the thorn armor, which is fantastic if you've ever used it. It can be really useful for very specific things. I'm going to be using it against the Crystal Sage coming up in a later video, and it's uh, incredibly effective, so definitely steal that technique if you've never seen it before. But here is the Malik guy, wielding one of the worst weapons in the game. It looks hilarious, but it doesn't perform very well. And that makes me really sad, because my favourite weapon in Dark Souls 1 is probably the blacksmith's hammer. You know, the uh, the giant blacksmith, the lightning hammer. And I was hoping there'd be something similar in this game, and the only thing even remotely close seems to be the mallet, but the mallet's a piece of dog shit. And it saddens me greatly. I was hoping that because he died, we'd be able to pick his hammer up, you know, the, the big old giant blacksmith. But alas, it doesn't seem to be in the game. Anyhow, time to slap a tree. So let's see what his name is. Cursed... Curse Rotted Greywood, there we go. So the strategy here is the same on almost every new game cycle for me. I'm going to hit his balls until they rupture and make every man watching wince. And then I'm going to run away from him. You can use this as an opportunity to hit his feet and burst some of the other ones or hit his hands and burst another one. It's entirely up to you. Uh, this guy killed me a few times. I got kind of unlucky with it. Uh, there is a, a crawling attack that he does at distance that has one of the worst hitboxes in the game. And the amount of times I've been hit by, by things that never touched me is really preposterous. Like, I didn't even realise that this, this tree had bad hitboxes until I got killed a few times on this recording. So my strategy is the same I've always used. I get distance from the, the boss and I try and make it stand up and then punish the stand-up attack. If it does the, the walking forward thing, if you sprint to the right, you can kind of hook around its intestines and not get touched. But the hitbox on it is quite wide. And then if he does the roly-poly move, be very careful, because once again, I got hit by that when it was nowhere even near me. And I would share these videos of me getting hit by these dodgy hitboxes, but there's so many of them, I'd end up making way more than the videos of the guide. So there's just no need. And if you can get him to lay down like this after hitting his back, uh, you can sometimes hit his arms or finish off his back and get some extra damage on him. This was just something I was messing around with. I generally never do this. Oh, and another thing, on, on under these stipulations, you know the, the, the kind of like pus, or the whatever that liquid is that he secretes, it's an instant kill, which I thought was hilarious. And you can have full life as well. It doesn't matter if my, my life is empty like it is right now, but it, it just doesn't matter. If you get touched by that shit, it's like instant death. I had no idea it did that kind of damage, but of course, this is a higher New Game Plus cycle, so that explains a lot. And every so often the frame rate in this fight fluctuated a little bit, but it was nowhere near anything like console, so it still felt awesome. And that was me with a lot of windows open as well. I was capturing with, with uh, Bandicam, I had Audacity open, I had a few things open at the time. Here he goes again with the jump. And it's coming towards the end of it. And you might see the, the modded life here come into effect once we kill this. I don't know if you saw it for the dancer. But once this boss dies, if you watch myself get embered, you'll see my life go back down to what I've uh, set the, the variable to in the engine. 
So if you watch, guys, 100% full disclosure here for anybody who's curious. So we'll get the heal. Do you see it? See, that's exactly what it does. It will not let my HP go higher. It's fantastic. I wish I could do it on every Souls game. It'd be my favourite thing. And it just goes to show that just because it's technically a cheat doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it, it gives me any kind of massive advantage. All it does is save me time. It saves me time and it's beautiful and I love it. Thank you for watching. You take care now.